Hey Ben, so I wanted to drop you a video to help you with your individual drills, which will be starting next week with the tight ends. Uh, again, off the top of our head, that you have two tight ends to be working with. Braden, who is pretty experienced and he's big and he's athletic. And then our brand new kid, Devin, who has never played football before. So at least on the surface, you've got the opposite of both sides. That doesn't mean that necessarily one is easier than the other. Like, you know, Braden will probably think he knows everything and Devin will hang on every word you say. So it doesn't necessarily mean one kid is going to be easier to work with than the other. But what we want you to be able to do is we want you to be able to run individual goals that clearly lend to the skills that they're going to need for our base plays. Hopefully you've gotten a chance to look at our base plays. 88 reach, that's the jet sweep. 6 GO, that's the power play. 65 crisscross, I know you know the crisscross play. And both green and sprint are pass plays. This one is a play action, this one is not a play action. So because the tight end is unique and needed to be both a blocker, like an offensive lineman, and a pass receiver, um, you need to be able to have two different types of skill sets worked into your individual drills. And here are some ideas that I think would help. Uh, I'm not really going to be addressing the skill set for 88 reach because that's mostly going to be double teams or down blocks, and we'll be doing that with our EDD drills. But the skills I want to help you with are the ones for these plays. Let's start with 6GO. For 6GO, the tight end is a blocker, but he has to be able to perform three different kinds of blocks. He needs to be able to perform the down, excuse me, not the down, but the gap block, the down block, and the block onto a backer. We talked about that in the previous film, if you haven't gotten a chance to see it yet. Here's how I would start your individual drills. You take your tight end, and you hold the bag. meaning a shield, right in the gap to his inside where he would have to block gap on 6GO. You give him the cadence. Go, ready, hut. On our run plays, it's always on hut. And what he has to do is he has to perform our shoulder block with his head to the outside and drive you with the shield for 12 steps inside. Pretty simple stuff. It's a close contact block, but that tight end has got to be able to take care of a defensive end if a defensive end is in that inside gap. So I would do that to the right, and then I would do that to the left. You don't need to kill this because you've got a lot to go through, but you need to make sure that they know that if there's a man in their inside gap on 6GO, they've got to block them down. Not just make contact, but block them down. After you've done that, the next one I would do is the next logical progression. You set up your tight end, and this can just be with a cone, right? And you tell him to imagine there's nobody in your gap, but there is a defender over the tackle. That's his down block. So he is going to have to block this defender with the same technique he used for the gap, except it's a man down, hence the word down. Now, make sure you tell him that his first step has to be with that inside foot. And that inside foot has to be at an angle where he'll be able to cut off the defender. Same thing. Do it to the left do it to the right so that we can run 6GO and 7GO. But he has to know that if there's a man down on the tackle, he's got to block that guy. Finally, do a third rep. Here's your tight end. And you tell the tight end there's nobody in the gap. There's nobody down the tackle. So he has to go up to the backer. And this is you standing with the shield. 
give him his cadence, go, ready, hunt. The tight end steps with his inside foot, and he angles up to the backer. Head to the outside. Um, you know, when he comes at you, take a step this way, as if you were reacting to the jet so that he might have to adjust with you and that you're not just standing there as a statue. But that, those three would be a pretty good progression to make sure he has the skill set for 6GO. You would have done the gap, you would have done the down, you would have done the backer. And it's really not hard. Really not hard. Okay, so that's your first drill. You just, I don't know, you come up with a name for it. Um, call it GDL. Come on, boys, we're going to do GDL today. Gap down linebacker. Or GDB, gap down backer. That's easier to say. I'll write that here for you. And I like the sound of that. They'll remember that, and that'll help them remember it too. Um, second thing, the skill set he'll need for 65 crisscross, not hard to do at all. Hold on, Ben. Shandy just walked into the room. How long do you have? Five minutes. Sure, just give me five minutes. Okay, so for this, Ben, for 65 crisscross, the tight end's rule is to replace and turn. And let me explain what we want that to look like. So you remember, on our crisscross play, the guard pulls and kicks out, the tackle circles, and your tight end has to step down, replace him, and then turn back. So you need to mimic this action. I think this is pretty simple. Put the tight end here. And you can stand here with the shield. Tell the tight end you got to step down and turn back. And then you're going to do one of two things. First, start your cadence. Go, ready, hunt. He's got to step a full man down. Remember, that's what the tight end will forget. He'll get lazy, and he'll step a half man down, and that won't be enough to close the hole. He's got to step a full man down. You, then with the bag, charge forward to where he's supposed to be. If it's done correctly, if he stepped all the way down, you two should meet face to face. And all he's got to do, you can even use inside grips or like this, it doesn't matter. Well, yes, keep it like this. All he's got to do is ice pick you to stop your charge. Have him do that once, then have him reset. And the second time, go ready, hut. When he steps down, instead of you stepping forward to him, try to come around him. Because that's going to force him to recognize he stepped down, nobody has come, so now he's got to do the turn. And as he turns, he should be able to catch you coming around the outside. Do that to the right and do it to the left. It really shouldn't take very long. Again, Ben, you could have the other kid hold the shield and do this, but if you have the other kid hold the shield and do this, then you have to explain the drill again to another person. I think it would be quicker if you ran with the shield. You don't have to get in heavy contact with the kids. This isn't about killing them, but this is about getting their muscle memory to react quickly. Athletes can change positions quickly, and we want him to be able to change from here to here, and then possibly turn back. Okay, that will take care of your skills. Well, look what we've done. For this, you've got the gap down backer drill, GDB. For this, you could call it R&T, replace and turn drill. And now we'll get to the stuff that they like. We'll get to the catching passes stuff. So for green, Ben, I think you can keep this pretty simple. Line that tight end up, and you tell him to take his four-step corner. One, two, three, four, and heads to the corner. You stand over here, throw him a pass. Keep it simple. And if this gets too boring, well, what you can do is you can tell him that the corner has dropped deep, 
we redraw that back? The corner has dropped deep, so he can't keep going to the corner, but rather he has to cut it off. But the point is, get him running that four-step corner and throw in the ball. So we start getting some pass completions and some reps with that. You can do it to the left and the right. That's the skill he needs for green. And the skill he needs for sprint is similar, but I do need you to change it a bit. For sprint, put a cone off to the side. I don't know, I'd say about five yards out, three to four yards back, and tell him he's gonna run his two-step arrow and he's got to go right behind that cone. You stand over here again. You don't need to run, but as he passes that cone, throw him the ball. Now, there's some changes you can put on this as you go along, and if it gets boring, you know, he's told that if he gets to the sideline and he hasn't gotten the ball, that he needs to turn up. He's also told that if he gets out here and sees that the quarterback has run, that he's going to stop and block whoever is near him. You can work those things into the drill as well, but for the first couple of weeks, all we need him doing is finding that number one player and running the arrow right behind them. Because remember, the wing is going to run right in front of him, putting that can of ice. Um, that takes care of your sprint. So for your individual period, here are four possible drills. GDB, replace and turn. I don't know what you call this. Four-step corner, or I wouldn't call it green because the opposite side is gold. So call it four-step. And for sprint, call it two-step. That mix is blocking and pass catching, which the kids are going to like. I think that should be enough to arm you for the first week of practice, but let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you then.